rid of PG-13. Hello and welcome back to an, uh, another very special episode of Burn the World. And today, yes, it is finally time to do my summary and review on Avengers Endgame. So if you guys don't know, I am like, I am just a, a huge fanboy and know-it-all. Um, I, like, Brixton was, uh, Brixton was calling me a nerd when we were playing the Endgame mode on Fortnite because I was saying, like, that's not the, that's not the, uh, order he got the Infinity Stones in, like, I memorize stuff like that, um, but, uh, yeah, so, if you guys want to see it, um, I would recommend checking it out, um, there's a lot of editing and stuff I put into it, um, last year, of course, my Avengers Infinity War movie summary and review, uh, the link is down in the description of this video, along with the last video, the, um, Fortnite X Avengers Endgame, um, uh, video, uh, so yeah, so make sure to check that out, that is, um, during, like, the intro of that, that's where I, like, fully geek out, and, like, I, I fully edited pictures in there and everything, and I talked about, like, the origin and where each of the Infinity Stones came from, and, like, just every single thing you could ever want to know about, um, the MCU, <laughs> pretty much, because uh, I pretty much have it all memorized and known. Um, but yeah, so uh, today is Saturday for me. Um, so Avengers Endgame officially got worldwide worldwide released uh, yesterday, um, April 26. Uh, but yeah, so we pre-ordered the tickets again. Um, I believe the only times we've ever done that was for Infinity War and this. Maybe Transformers Dark of the Moon or something. Um, <laughs> can't really remember. But um, yeah, so this time it was just me and my dad, my little brother... Uh, went to see Infinity War, but he, uh, is just waiting for this one for physical media or whatever. Um, so yeah, but, so, as you can see, I don't have my paper like usual. I haven't the past few times, um, because I just don't really feel the need to anymore, really. Um, I might for some, but I don't really know. Um, but last time, my Infinity War thing, I literally had to type up, you guys remember, I typed up, like, six whole pages or so. It was, like, actually might have been, like, eight or something. Um, but yeah, so... Getting right into it, so first off, um, it is once again directed by Joel and Anthony Russo. Um, it is three hours and one minute, so um, I heard that they're making either Infinity War or Infinity War at the time, Infinity War Part 2, um, three hours, but I didn't really think they were actually going to go through with it, because um, Infinity War was the longest MCU movie, but it was like two hours and 40-something minutes. But uh, yeah, they actually pulled the three hours with this one, um, which I really think it was good to do it with this one because, I mean, you know, it's kind of the final film of the past 11 years, and you guys know how connected I am to these and how much I love these because that's past 11 years, and I'm just over 17 and a half, so that's a good majority of my life, actually. Um, so yeah. Um, so basically, getting into the summary real quick, um, or er, real quick, kind of. Um, but yeah, so starting off, it starts off with, uh, Hawkeye basically, um, on a family picnic with his wife and son and daughter and stuff, and he's kind of just teaching his daughter how to, like, um, shoot a bow and arrow, and, um, and, uh, she gets, she hits a bullseye eventually, and he actually calls her Hawkeye. Um, the only other time they've ever referenced his name was on the first Avengers once, uh, uh, was when a guy called him Hawk. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, but then all of a sudden he, like, um, they say, like, what they want on their hot dogs, and then he kind of turns around to go get something real quick, and then when he comes back, his daughter's gone, and then everything's just quiet, and he, you just see some ash floating away. It was just as haunting at the as the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp when he was, like, telling them that he's ready to get pulled back in, and then all of a sudden it shot back, and it just showed ash falling down. Uh, so, yeah, so, it's just like that, and then, um... Yeah, so then that's pretty much, uh, that's Hawkeye's turning point, pretty much. Um, but, uh, so then after that, um, basically it cuts to, uh, Tony. He is, of course, stranded in space on the, um, Guardian ship, uh, not the Milano. I can't remember the name of it, but their new orange one from Infinity War. Um, but yeah, so basically, if you guys remember from when they're, uh, on Titan, the only ones that didn't get dusted, uh, by the snap were... Uh, Tony Stark and Nebula, so they're both stranded on the ship, um, it was actually really good, they're, they had, like, a little, um, song playing, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but, uh, yeah, they had a little song playing, and then, um, Nebula was playing a fierce game of finger football with Tony, um, but yeah, so it was really cool to see them work together, and they were even, like, fixing up the ship and stuff, and, uh, yeah, so, um, 
Tony Stark and Nebula were a pretty good little um, partner team up there. Um, but then eventually, after he records kind of his goodbye message to Pepper through his helmet and everything, um, in referencing back to the first Iron Man when he said, like, don't put, I better not see this on your mind space. He said, like, don't post this on social media. Um, but he basically falls asleep and just gets ready to die because um, they're running out of oxygen and food and stuff. But then all of a sudden, he, like, Nebula puts him in the seat, and then later on he wakes up because there's, like, a bright thing. And then she flies up to the thing, the windshield. And it is Captain Marvel. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't actually show her, like, pushing him back to Earth or whatever. But, uh, yeah, Captain Marvel saves them um, from, of course, uh, Nick Fury's little, um, little call thing. Um, so yeah, so basically they arrive back at, uh, Avengers HQ, where basically the rest of the remaining Avengers that didn't get snapped away are, um, Captain America's all shaven and everything, and then, um, that was like the first scene that I really kind of, or after the, uh, Hawkeye's family, um, I also got chills because, uh, the first one to greet Tony off the ship is Captain America, which if you don't know, that's the first time Captain America and Iron Man have, like, met up um, since the end of Civil War, so that was pretty darn big, um, but yeah, so Tony's pretty darn weak and everything, um, so all the other Avengers are kind of taking care of him, and he gets pretty flustered at Captain America again, um, and then eventually just kind of passes out, and he kind of just, they kind of let him rest, because he kind of just knocks himself out, basically, um, but yeah, so the rest of the Avengers also meet Captain Marvel, and they say, like, they're just calling her a new girl and everything, and she's saying, like, oh, I've been here, um, just as long as most of you, I've just, there's just tons of other planets, and this planet's just lucky enough to have you guys, um, so yeah, so, um, and that's when, like, the whole, like, Thor saying I like her, um, comes and everything, um, but yeah, so then basically the rest of the Avengers besides, um, Iron Man, um, use Nebula to track down where Thanos is, of course he is, um, on his little farm planet that he went to after the snap, but now he's, like, even more beat up, not only is he an Infinity Gauntlet, basically, like, a burnt cookie to his arm, um, he now has used the stones to destroy the stones, and, like, it's all burnt right here, um, and, uh, yeah, so, um, so all the Avengers arrive there, they actually kind of do, like, a sneak attack on their Thanos, it's just, like, making some food after picking some plants or whatever, um, with his armor as a scarecrow reference to the comics, um, and, uh, yeah, they all come down, um, or actually, like, one of them comes in, and then it just kind of surprises him, they get, like, him in a chokehold, um, but then all of a sudden, they notice that the, the stones are not in the Infinity Gauntlet, and Thanos explains that he destroyed them, and then, um, Thor just gets really mad, because he's been all bummed that he didn't go for the head, and, um, so, chops his arm off, um, to see the gauntlet, that's when they figure out that there's no stones, and then later on, uh, Than or Thor just straight up chops his head off, and they're just like, what did you do? And he was just like, I went for the head. Um, so yeah, so they basically just kill Thanos right off the bat. Um, and that's pretty much the end of the beginning right there. Um, so yeah, so after that, just says five years later, and, uh, yeah, then we pick up, um, uh, so basically Black, uh, Black Widow is just at the base, kind of running Avengers HQ, and Captain America kind of meets up with her and says that he kind of like, um, he's kind of, he's kind of running a therapy group, and there's actually a cameo from, um, I believe Joel Russo, or one of the Russo brothers, um, as like the first openly gay character, um, in it, Captain America's little like support group for the people who had like loved ones get snapped away or whatever. Um, but yeah, so he's basically just trying to get everybody to move on, even though everybody's lost to tons of people. Um, but, uh, yeah, so including, um, Black Widow, and she's kind of trying to get everyone, like, back, um, in line and everything, and she's trying to figure out where Hawkeye is, because he's kind of been on the run ever since his family went, um, and they said that he's, um, in Tokyo, um, piling up, uh, thug bodies and stuff, um, so yeah, so if you don't know, I was talking about my, in my, back in my Infinity War review, he is Ronin now, but that doesn't come until a little bit later, but we'll talk about that later, um, so yeah, so then it basically shows Iron Man, and he actually has a kid, which I was, one of my favorite things about this movie, I think, is just Iron Man having a kid, like, you just wouldn't think that you would really, like, care to see that, but, like, I don't know, it was, it was actually really kind of enjoyable, just, like, Iron Man, and he's, 
ready to pepper pots and they have a little kid and, um of course uh um uh named Jordan uh Stark I believe um I don't really remember but um uh yeah named Morgan Stark um so yeah so basically he's just kind of checking um what she's doing outside in her little tent and um yeah and, and that he's basically just living a life I mean downstairs he's still got kind of a um, he's, he's kind of living in like a, just like a cabin on a lake and it's just a pretty nice little place. Um, very different from his Malibu mansion. Um, but yeah, downstairs he actually still does kind of have like a Malibu mansion kind of garage type building. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, but basically some of the other Avengers show up in a nice brand new, uh, Audi type. Um, and they basically say that they need him to help them figure out, um, how to go after Thanos because even though they already killed him uh they or not really go after Thanos they they want to figure out how to go back and get all of the stones so they can still snap back um everyone that they did lose um but uh not necessarily still have to fight Thanos um but he completely like he's out of it and he just like flat out says no because he has a daughter and everything um but uh, yeah, so it's also where we get the first look at the rescue armor. Yes, finally, it's in the MCU. We've been waiting for it forever. Um, but yeah, of course, in Iron Man 3, there's a few times where uh, Pepper kind of tried out the Iron Man armor, but she had like no idea how to use it. So I was saying like if she does use it, then obviously Tony taught her some stuff because um, yeah, but basically when he pulls Morgan out of the tent, um, she's wearing like a cool new helmet and she says your mother won't wear it. Um, or your mother won't wear my stuff. So yeah, so rescue armor finally did come. Uh, sadly, it wasn't her that came up and rescued Tony. And that's what I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, it was Captain Marvel. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that more later. Um, but yeah, so basically, of course, Tony being Tony, he still ends up thinking about it later on. Um, and basically, at his little hologram board, um, he actually cusses and Morgan cusses and he like he's all joking around with her that like uh mom coined that term and she's the only one allowed to say it um but yeah so basically he gets so surprised because he all of a sudden like figures out like the loop and how to basically time travel which is basically his greatest achievement yet um just flat out figuring out how to like time travel um because um uh basically ant-man um how he gets back is they're in like a storage cell thing in like this big old storage place and a rat just happens to walk across the thing in um, the van with the teleporter um, or the quantum realm thing in it um, and he comes back and he's completely lost because of course for him it's been like five uh, he said it's been five hours but it's actually been five years um, so he figure he finds a little memorial thing of everyone that was like dusted um, and he doesn't see like anybody else but he sees his own name uh, Scott Lang and then he ends up going to his house and then finds his daughter um, Cassie and she's like a teenager now um, But yeah, so they get back together um, But yeah, so he basically like he already knows that time travel is possible with it um, He just doesn't really know how um, but he does have some pin particles um, But they only have enough to like go there and back um, so they have to do everything right the first time um, So yeah, so once they figure it all out um they're back at base trying to figure it out and they're having some troubles there's this funny scene where like um they they go back and um hulk over those five years he learned how to fuse himself with hulk uh bruce banner and hulk so that he's now professor hulk so pretty much the whole movie um if you missed hulk in infinity war well the makeup for this him in this because there's 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 only a couple scenes where it's actually bruce banner um but most of it is just uh professor hulk but yeah it's basically just hulk with Mark Ruffalo's voice, um, but it's really cool because he's, he's just Hulk, but he's, he can work in Hulks, um, so yeah, so he's Professor Hulk now, um, and so basically him and a couple of other people are trying to figure out how to do it, and there's this funny scene where, like, Scott Lang, he's going back through, and he, like, comes back, and he's, and, um, he's, like, a little kid, and then they put him back and pull him through again, and he's, like, a big old old man, um, and then one more time and he's a little baby and then he comes back um and then he's finally back to who he was so they had like some trouble but then uh iron man shows up a little later and he tells them that he figured it all out and that he'll help them um pretty much uh so they figure they figure it all out they get their quantum realm suits which of course are like those white and red ones 
really cool and sleek and everything. And um, they basically group up and they figure out, they make a whole plan on where and how to get the Infinity Stones the, easily, e mo the most easy, the most easily um, by going back in time. Um, they just have to make sure that they don't like see themselves, kind of like a Back to the Future. They they reference pretty much any every time travel movie in here. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, there's this big old like circle thing. Uh, it kind of looks like the thing from the new Fantastic Four. Um, but uh, yeah, or the newest Fantastic Four. Um, yeah, so basically they're like going back into the future, or they're going back um, in time to get all the stones and they figure out um, they're just like, oh wait, there was three Infinity Stones in New York during like the Battle of New York from the first Avengers at the same time. Um, the Time Stone, the Mind Stone, and the Space Stone. Um, so yeah, so I believe Tony, Ant-Man, or um, Iron Man, uh, Ant-Man, and Captain America went back to the Battle of New York. Oh yeah, and Hulk. Um, so basically Hulk he goes um, to the Sanctum Sanctorum, so of course Doctor Strange and all that stuff was not uh, in the MCU back then, uh, but secretly, uh, the Ancient One was helping out, you just never saw her, um, in the first Avengers, but yeah, so she's basically the Chitauri are flying around, and she's just in the Sanctum Sanctorum, just flinging her little spells around, and she actually helped out. Um, so yeah, so she's wearing the Eye of, Eye of Agamotto, and um, uh, Bruce is kind of just trying to get it from her and she's like she um does a little thing that she did to Doctor Strange the astral projection thing and like smacks his chest and then Bruce Banner kind of flies out and they have this long talk for a while um kind of cutting back and forth with other scenes too um about like that's basically where they learn like that they can get all the infinity stones but they have to bring them back once they do um else then it, they'll their future will be fine but every, every other future will like split off some other way and it will just be a big ol' confusing bad mess um so yeah so after um and they said like um if you don't win the, the universe is in bigger trouble than thanos just snapping everything away because now there's multiple different realities and stuff um so yeah so if they fail then it's gonna be horrible but if they don't then they can get the infinity stones back to where they need to be um in the past um so yeah so they basically learn that and while they're doing that um the other two, uh, Iron Man and uh, Captain America, go back to the Avengers Tower and everything, and they're seeing like the Avengers escorting Loki after the battle and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, they kind of combine. Like I thought they were gonna go to the time of Captain America: The Winter Soldier and all that stuff to, for some of these scenes. Uh, but uh, yeah, so of course Tilda Swinton returns as the Ancient One, but you also got Robert Redford as uh, uh, Alexander Pierce uh, returns, um, and. Uh, I can't remember his name. Frank Grillo uh, also returns as uh, Brock Rumlow. Um, no, of course not Crossbones. Um, but yeah, so they kind of remade that uh, elevator scene. Um, so after they get like the scepter, um, Loki scepter for the Mind Stone, he's got in a case and then they're, um, he goes down the elevator and they're kind of worried, um, all the secret Hydra agents. Um, but yeah, so they're basically just having a conversation and then Captain America, um, he like, before he gets off the elevator, he's just like, he just says Hail Hydra and all the other people on the border or on the elevator just like way. Um, so yeah, so they get like really confused, but that was a pretty awesome little scene. Um, uh, so after that, um, Iron Man, of course, uh, Ant Man, like um, Robert or uh, Alexander Pierce is kind of getting suspicious of Iron Man trying to gather with um, uh, Loki and everything, and he wants to take him in, uh, but Thor says that he'll be under the supervision of Odin. So that, so Ant-Man has to go in the, um, Tony Stark of the past, he has to, like, go in his arc reactor, since it was still, like, in his chest at that time, and, like, break this little thing, or move this little thing that makes him, like, pass out, uh, so it can distract them, and then, um, they can get the, uh, the, uh, Tesseract, um, but then all of a sudden, um, Hulk, uh, from the past, of course, he couldn't really control himself, and he had to take the stairs earlier on instead of the elevator. Uh, so he comes out, actually, um, just full-on smashes, uh, Tony Stark, uh, from the future, who is disguised as, like, a little SWAT team guy. Um, and he goes flying, and so does the Tesseract, and then Loki just kind of, like, looks back, and then he just picks it up and, um, teleports away. Uh, so that kind of puts that whole thing in peril. Um... So, yeah, um, but, so they have to figure out another way to go and do that, um, but, 
at the same time, um, some other things is uh, Thor and Rocket Raccoon. Um, so basically, earlier on, Hulk and Rocket Raccoon, um, they had the little, uh, they had the little, ha um, the Super Sonic Rocket Ship or whatever the song's called by the the Kings, um, was playing in. Uh, you guys know after the end of Thor Ragnarok, they made it. Um, they were talking about making the new Asgard, which they finally did. Um, so yeah, so Thor and um, uh, or uh, Hulk and Rocket Raccoon are just like riding in the back of a truck with a little groovy tune, and they're just like driving into Scotland or uh, wherever they made it. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so and it just has a little sign that says New Asgard, and they're driving down, and it's just kind of like a little fishing town looking thing, um, and you couldn't really tell that they're Asgardians. Um, but yeah, so then they walk into the thing. And of course, with a little partnership with Fortnite, they walk in, and yes, Korg returns. So he's sitting there with a little kind of floral shirt. He looks just like Taika Waititi would dress. Um, but yeah, so he's hanging out with Meek on the couch, um, playing Fortnite. And um, and there's like this guy with a weird name. I can't remember. It, it ended with 69, um, of course. So yeah, so he's getting bullied by him, and then he was just and he was just like, Thor, can you help me out? He's calling me mean names again. Um, and so Thor like picks up the mic, and he was just like. If you call that again, I'm gonna come to your house and rip both your arms off or something like that. And then Thor, and then Korg was just like, "Oh, thanks, man." Um, so yeah, so gotta love Korg, but uh, so yeah, so that was, that was kind of a good scene, I think. Um, but yeah, so at this time, Thor has changed for the worse. He is a big old fat guy. He's got long hair again, a big old beard. Um, multiple times in the movie, they compare him to the dude from The Big Lebowski. Um, he's constantly drinking and thinking where the nearest place he can get some, um, booze at is, um, but, uh, yeah, so, that's where they pick up Thor in the future now, um, so basically, later on, him, uh, Thor and Rocket Raccoon, their job is to go back to Asgard during the events of Thor the Dark World to get the ether out of, um, Natalie Portman's Jane Foster character before the Dark Elves, uh, come for her. Um, so the Rocket Raccoon has this little extractor thing, uh, so, um, of course Thor's mother, uh, got killed in Thor the Dark World, so all of a sudden she, uh, he actually runs into her, and they have a big old conversation, uh, which was pretty darn awesome to see them finally talking again, but in the, in the meantime, um, Rocket Raccoon, like, sneaks in, um, as Jane Foster's, like, waking up, and, um, it doesn't really show it, but all of a sudden Rocket Raccoon's getting chased, and, uh, yeah, he got the, uh, got the reality stone, um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, Thor says goodbye to his mother since he can't save her, um, from getting killed, um, no matter what, because it would mess it up, mess up the realities and everything, um, uh, he says goodbye, and then he just says, like, and he says, like, oh, wait, one more thing, and he holds his arm up, and then Rocket's just like, I don't really see anything coming, but then his mother's just like, oh, yeah, it takes a few minutes, a second sometimes, and then he gets Mjolnir, so, yeah, so he got Mjolnir back, um, so now, uh, Thor has got Stormbreaker and Mjolnir, um, so that's pretty darn insane, um, so yeah, so they, their mission was pretty successful, um, but, so, but then, um, Black Widow, uh, Black Widow, War Machine, um, Hawkeye, and Nebula, I believe, um, they all go to, I can't remember the planet's name, the, the, it was like at the very beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, uh, when that planet, um, where, uh, Star-Lord was doing a little dance walking up at the beginning titles of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 to get the, like, go into the chamber where the Power Stone orb is, um, so yeah, so, uh, Nebula and, um, uh, War Machine stay behind on that planet, um, and they basically, during his little dance number, um, after, after, uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow leave them, um, they go in, and during his little dance number, uh, they just end up knocking out, uh, Star-Lord, and then, of course, since Nebula has a little robot hand, she just reaches in and grabs the orb, um, but at this time, um, it kind of started cutting back to scenes on, uh, Thanos' ship, and this is, like, when, uh, this is, like, before the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, and, um, so yeah, so Gamora and Nebula are still, like, kind of just fighting a little bit, um, and they're still, like, under the control of Thanos. Um, but yeah, so Thanos is back in his armor and everything, and it's past Thanos and past Gamora and past, uh, Nebula. Um, but Nebula, the, from the future, she's got all fixed up. She's, like, patched herself up with some yellow, uh, parts. 
Um, so then you can tell that's the past Nebula because he still has like some broken face parts. Um, um, so yeah, so basically the bad thing is of course he can, Thanos can use Nebula's like memory thing and he can also see like what's going on elsewhere in the universe. So this is when it starts going real bad because all of a sudden she grabs the stone or the orb and then War Machine says like, okay, let's count down. And then he teleports back to the future, but she all of a sudden her like head sparks and she just falls down and she can't cause someone's like accessing her view or whatever. So that right there, um, pretty much uh, Thanos, Gamora and Nebula all figure out what's going on. Um, they figure out the whole plan, what the vendors are doing, going back in time to get all the stones. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's when it kind of turns for the worse. Um, but, yeah, so eventually, um, uh, I think, yeah, uh, so War Machine did get the Power Stone, luckily. At first I thought Nebula was still holding it, and he teleported back. Um, so I was just like, oh, that kind of just perils it all. But, uh, no, I think War Machine did get it, because they, they don't really show it, but I, um, later on they just have the Power Stone, so obviously he got away with it. Um, so, yeah, so she's basically stranded on that planet for now. Um, but, so, at the same time, since the Tesseract got, uh, taken by Loki, um, they have to go farther back in the future, or farther back in the past, um, Captain America and, uh, Iron Man, to get more pin particles and to another place that they can get the Tesseract. Um, so basically, they go back to, like, a World War II kind of barracks camp or whatever, um, and this is where we get to see some more cool characters in the past. So, first off, we get to see Hank Pym, um, with his hippie hair, um, and he's just like a big old, um, sign, nerd scientist, um, and so yeah, so you don't see him too much, you see him with all of his ant farms, but after they get the Tesseract, you see him like, he's like, saying like, it got stolen and everything, uh, but yeah, so Captain America, he's kind of, um, disguised as a soldier, and Iron Man is, um, kind of just disguised as like a businessman from the, uh, like, I think this was probably set in like the 50s or 60s, I'd say. Um, judging on how Hank Pym and Howard Stark looked. But yeah, so that's the other person, is Howard Stark. This is the most we've ever seen him in a movie. But, uh, yeah, so this is about the age, I mean, I would say he's probably in his, like, his 30s, maybe? Um, probably early 30s or so. Um, but yeah, so basically, he, um, uh, Tony gets the Tesseract from their little vault, um, underneath a, like, barracks place, um, and gets in the briefcase when he runs into Howard Stark. And, um, yeah, he's basically just giving it, he's basically just talking about, like, how he had a daughter, and then he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm expecting a son, too. Of course, Tony. Um, so, yeah, so, it's kind of, it was really, really nice, because, like, of course, as we'll talk about later, um, before he went, Tony got to kind of reconcile with his dad, even though his dad didn't even know that was, uh, his son in the future. Um, but, yeah, so they got to kind of, like, make it up, and, because, of course, you know, you know, they didn't really have a bad, uh, a good relationship or anything. Um, but yeah, towards the end, uh, Tony just, like, gives him a hug, and he's just like, wait, what? Um, and he's, like, giving him advice and saying he'll turn out fine and everything, um, before saying goodbye, um, and meeting back up with Captain America to go back to the future. Uh, so yeah, so they successfully got all of, um, those stones, but at the same time, of course, the soul stone, um, I don't really know why they didn't say, like, oh yeah, one of you is gonna have to be sacrificed. Um, I know at one point, when they are planting the stones, uh, Ant-Man said, like, um, uh, Nebula said, like, um, that Thanos sacrificed my sister to get the Soul Stone, um, and Ant-Man said, like, not it, um, but later on, Black Widow and Hawkeye just go there, like, they're just gonna get the Soul Stone, but then once they get there, they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, Hawkeye and Black Widow, it's gonna be one of them, um, but yeah, so, first off, I just have to say, uh, like, Black Widow, she, she's kind of been growing quite a bit since Age of Ultron, I'd say, but Hawkeye, he's never really been, like, a super-liked character, um, kind of in Age of Ultron, um, and then he was completely absent for Infinity War, and you didn't really see him that much since Age of Ultron, um, so yeah, so it was, you never really got to, like, connect with him, but in this movie, he's actually one of the standout characters, um, surprisingly, he actually has one of the bigger screen times, uh, him and Ant-Man, um, since they're absent from Infinity War, um, and on House Arrest and everything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so they really, like, it, he, they really bumped his character up. I actually really love the character of Hawkeye in this movie. Um, but yeah, so later on, of course, or I mean, earlier on, of course, um, Black Widow gets Hawkeye. 
by going to Tokyo, and it was a really awesome scene. He's like flat out Batman or something. Um, um, but yeah, he's taking on like a whole gang, and it's like all dark, and you can't really see him, and he's just like throwing ninja stars and like sword fighting uh, Tokyo, like Japanese gangsters and stuff. And it was really, really awesome. Um, and I thought he was just going to use this really cool katana thing. Um, but he uses his bow and his katana. And, of course, he's got the cool black and gold ronin armor. Uh, but, yeah, so he takes off his mask and turns around. And that's where Black Widow and him meet up. And at first, he doesn't want to do it either. Um, uh, but he does eventually. So, yeah, so they go to Vormir. Um, this is later on, of course. They go to Vormir. Um, and, of course, they meet back up with Stonekeeper Red Skull. And he basically gives the same same speech as on Infinity War. Um, but yeah, so then they kind of realize and they're talking like, uh, they're kind of talking to each other but not really saying like that they want themselves to have to be sacrificed. Because um, Black Widow, like she thinks her kind of uh, story arc or whatever is over and she doesn't really have like, the only family she has left is the like the Avengers. And um, Captain uh, uh, Hawkeye, if they succeed, then he has a whole family to go back to and a lot more to go through. But Hawkeye doesn't want to because, of course, they both like really like each other. And he um, and he just feels like he has like nothing left to live for. And he just like wants to atone for his sins, I guess, of killing all the gangsters, even though I, I wouldn't really say that's a sin. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Basically, they're both uh, not. They're both. They both don't want to have to sacrifice each other. Um, so they they get into like a big old fight. Um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they just like start fighting um, and trying to get to the get to jump off the <laughs> the cliff thing. And um, and uh, he like he shoots a arrow that like explodes and makes her uh, go flying, and they can't get in. Then he jumps off, but then she jumps off and catches her. And then he like she very quickly like hooks on a little wire thing from his like waist to the mountain um so he like physically cannot get off unless if he cuts it or something uh so he's just hanging on to black widow and then he kind of starts crying and and she said like let me let me go it's fine um and so, yeah so this is the first kind of, uh scene i kind of teared up at not too much um but uh yeah it, it was pretty darn sad kind of like gamora like there's not like huge huge character development but you still like care for the characters quite a bit uh but yeah so eventually he just lets her go and it's kind of just like the gamora scene and so yeah so we get our first uh major death so uh scarlet or <laughs> not scarlet johansson uh black widow um does die and then of course uh captain or um hawkeye wakes up down in the water and has the soul stone in his hand um so yeah so they did have to lose one Avenger, but they got all the stones. Um, so finally, they all make it back um, to the uh, little uh, time machine thing, and they have all the stones, and everybody's wondering where um, Black Widow is. So they get all pretty sad and everything, and Hawkeye is pretty darn mad about it. Um, and they don't really have a funeral for her. I don't know if they ever will, but not in this movie. They kind of just all go out on the dock and talk and stuff. Um, for a little bit but uh yeah so but then all of a sudden they're like uh in the lab and everything and they're showing like the uh infinity gauntlet but it's actually the start tech gauntlet so yes from the comics i was really hoping that they would actually go through with the start tech gauntlet um and one of the avengers or somebody else besides thanos would actually like harness the infinity stones uh so yeah so it looked different than I, th I thought it would in the MCU, but it's literally pretty much just an Iron Man gauntlet. Um, but then all of a sudden he got the Infinity Stones and stuff. So yeah, so they put all the stones in it, and they have to decide who's strong enough to, like, harness it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, um, Thor is, he says, like, I'll, I'll do it, um, even though he knows he's probably not powerful enough for it. Um, but then uh, Hulk says that it would be more reasonable for him because he's powerful enough and it emits mainly gamma radiation and he's kind of made of gamma radiation. Um, so yeah, so they all decide that it's him, but at the same time they're all kind of um, in deep doo-doo because uh, if you guys remember Nebula got stranded on the planet and um, yeah, they got cap she got captured by the Thanos and Gamora and Nebula of the past. Um, so uh, yeah, so they... Um, 
So they kind of show like one of Gamora and Nebula's battles where Nebula like loses and then Thanos kind of replaces a part of her. Um, but yeah, so as time went on there, um, Gamora kind of made friends with the Nebula of the future and because Nebula like, tells her what happens in the future and like if they don't do something, um, what else will happen and that Gamora gets sacrificed and, they, uh, and that she really has to help them else and it will all go badly. Um, so yeah, but then it all gets mixed up. She, uh, the nebula of the past actually takes the yellow parts of the nebula from the future and puts it on her head. So when they get, um, so when she gets back, all the Avengers just think like it's just the nebula that they remember and she's just disguised as the nebula from the future. So yeah, so back um, where we were, um, so basically they figure out um, Hulk is going to be the one to do the snap to bring everyone back, um, and he explains later that uh, he did snap and he tried to, he actually tried to bring back um, Black Widow, but of course since it was a sacrifice for the Eternal Soul Stone, that's one thing like you cannot bring back. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, there's that, but, so basically, uh, he puts the gauntlet on, it kind of extends so it can fit his arm, uh, which was kind of cool since it's made out of, like, the nanotech, um, but he puts the arm on, uh, Iron Man kind of uses his nanotech shields to shield everyone, um, and then it starts just, like, shocking his whole body, his arm just, like, starts sizzling, and, um, yeah, it starts really messing up Hulk, um, and he, like, has this whole thing, and they ask him if he's alright, and he says, like, oh yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so eventually he gets the power to, um, just get the snap off, um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, um, Hawkeye kind of walks out of the room, and, um, and he sees that his wife is calling him, uh, so he calls, so he picks it up and starts talking to her, and Ant-Man's kind of looking around, and, like, he sees birds, and that everything is, um, most likely good again, um, but at that point... Um, that is where it all really goes bad, and, like, the whole last hour is just, like, I just get chills talking about it. It was literally the best cinematic event I've ever seen, <laughs> like, it is, it, not only is it everything I've ever wanted out of the MCU, but it's, like, or any superhero movie, but it's, like, it was just, I pretty much, for this whole last hour, I had, like, non-stop chills and, like, like, I've, I've only, like, like, uh, teared up or cried from movies from just, like, like, big old like, sadness or character deaths or whatever, but this one, it was, like, sometimes, like, I just got, like, so excited and happy, like, at that some things I've always wanted to happen happened, and I was just, like, flipping out in my seat, um, but, uh, yeah, and there was also, um, I'll tell you one of the scenes, but, like, I've, I've had people clap at the end in my theater, of course, you know, at Great Falls, Montana, the theater, like, People aren't usually too enthusiastic. Theaters kind of suck. Um, but yeah, this is the first movie. Like, I've had people clap at the end of, like, both of the Deadpool movies and some scenes on, like, Marvel movies or whatever. But, like, there was multiple times that I, like, I heard people sniffling. And there's a few times where people cheered and clapped. Like, they were so into this movie. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so basically this whole last hour is the last part of the movie. So, um... Of course, Nebula um, and everything, she she gives him the location, and Thanos is just going to go full force so he can just stop it and get his, uh, instead of waiting until the future to get the snap off, he just waits until now, because he saw, he saw, like, uh, Nebula's footage of him getting his head chopped off, and, like, he knows that that isn't the way, so he needs to do it now. Um, so, yeah, so they basically, all of a sudden, uh, Thanos is, you guys know Thanos' ship, it comes through the portal, or the time travel the time machine thing, and it's all small, and then it, like, grows, and then grows, and then goes through the roof, and then all of a sudden, it's just, like, huge, like, regular size, and there's just, like, this haunting shot of it, like, flying through the clouds and stuff, and then all of a sudden, it just unloads and just obliterates Avengers HQ, um, and at this time, um, uh, Thanos, or Hulk, of course, after he got the snap off, he just kind of took the gauntlet off and threw it, so his arm, I, I was told that his arm like got taken off at some point in the movie um but he actually never loses his arm it's just his arm is messed up looks like Thanos's arm it looks like a burnt cookie um but yeah so um we'll talk about more of that in a second 
So yeah, so the gauntlet's kind of just laying on the ground. Um, but uh, yeah, so after that, basically the whole, like, I mean, in a matter of seconds, the whole Avengers HQ is just completely smashed. All the Avengers are just buried in rubble. Um, so Hulk kind of lifts up stuff um, so War Machine can get out of his suit and escape um, along with Ro Rocket because I felt so bad because Rocket was just like a soggy little raccoon under a rock and he was just like, help me! <laughs> um, so yeah, so it, like uh, War Machine uses like a rock and some um, rebar and kind of uses the leverage to get the cement off of him and save Rocket. Um, so they kind of get saved and then um, all the other Avengers kind of make their way out, but Hawkeye, he's he's the only one that like landed with the Stark Tech Gauntlet. So this is kind of where the hot potato game with the gauntlet starts. So he starts running, it's quiet, and it's like the red emergency lights are on. And then all of a sudden, you just, uh, he shoots like this little light arrow down the tunnel, and all of a sudden there's Outriders like climbing down the walls. And um, so he, was, he starts <laughs> freaking out, he grabs the gauntlet and just runs. And he uses like explosive arrows to blow up the tunnels and kill some Outriders. And then he uses like a grappling hook arrow to kind of go up where um, he kills the rest of the Outriders and then gets saved um, by Nebula. But she all of a sudden takes the gauntlet and, and um, he was just like, oh, I know you. But then she takes the gauntlet and then he realizes that that's the, not the current uh, future Nebula. Um, so then all of a sudden, luckily, Gamora, the, fut or the past Gamora and the future Nebula show up and um, they like try making a deal with um, the past Nebula and everything, but it just doesn't work, so Nebula just has enough and just shoots herself. Uh, so yeah, so past Nebula is dead. Um, so yeah, so Thanos, af at, um, a little bit before that, he got off the ship and he's kind of just like, he's got his armor, his double-sided blade thing, and he's kind of just sitting outside chilling and he just says like, like he's all proud of Nebula now and he's just like, okay, the last thing you can prove to me that you're like a worthy daughter is go get the stone. So uh, yeah, she kind of failed. Um, but yeah, so they get the gauntlet back and start going with it. Um, uh, so yeah, so then, um, outside, uh, they're kind of getting the gauntlet where it needs to go, but then outside, Captain, like, the main three, Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor, they all go out and just walk, and then, um, eventually they, uh, come across Thanos, and they start, like, having a talk and everything. And, um, you can just see in their faces, like, they're done with him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so he's sitting there, and all of a sudden, they, like, they end up getting, like, just a huge duel. And it was, it was just so awesome seeing Thanos just take on all three of them at once. And it was just, like, a big old fight. Um, but, uh, yeah, so then all of a sudden, like, the ship, um, it, it's just, like, it just keeps on shooting down. And at this point, um, he's, just, like, he's just spawning in more goons. Um, he has... Uh, he resurrected the Black Order, so, um, if you guys don't remember, um, that is, uh, Proxima Midnight, Ebony Ma, uh, Cole Obsidian, and, um, Corvus Glaive. So, uh, throughout the movie, just like Infinity War, um, Ebony Ma is kind of Thanos' side man, and he's helping him out, and he, she, he was the one that was, like, always tearing apart Nebula and stuff. Um, so yeah, so they start readying up all the rest of the troops and everything, calling down more Outrider dropships. Um, so then they get the gauntlet out and, um, uh, but yeah, so they just have a big old fight with him, which was really, really awesome. Um, and at, like, at this point, like, uh, during the trailers, I thought these scenes were like on a different planet because like the skies are gray from Thanos' ship and everything and then it's just rubble and it just, I mean, it doesn't even look like it's Earth, um, where they're fighting because of course, uh, at, by the time Avengers Endgame, uh, the Avengers HQ is pretty darn massive. Um, so yeah, so also by this point, uh, Captain Marvel I thought was going to be in this movie a lot more. Um, I'm kind of happy she wasn't because I was kind of thinking like she was just like, oh, Captain Marvel is here. She's just going to beat Thanos and a uh, character that was just introduced is going to save the day and everything. Um, but actually she like saved Iron Man and she like helped him kill Thanos. But then she said she was going off and they might not see her for a while to save other planets and stuff. Um, and she comes back later, um, and she has, like, uh, short hair, kind of, like, uh, short hair, like, in the comics, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so you don't really see her until just a little bit after the scene I'm talking about, uh, right now. So, she's actually not really in the movie that often. Um, and let me tell you, she's, she's not the one to kill Thanos, and she's really doesn't do too much. 
Um, but yeah, so this point right here, all the other Avengers come out um, because they're getting their hands on the Stark Tech Gauntlet and they're really starting to toss it around. In this scene right here, like the Avengers theme song just starts playing um, because uh, Captain America, like he's getting his, uh, he's getting like his butt whooped. But um, just a little bit before that, this was a scene where like everybody just clapped. Uh, so yeah, so he like pretty much knocked out Iron Man for a second. Um, and then he's got like uh, him and Thor, Thanos and Thor were fighting um, uh, Thor with, uh, of course, Stormbreaker and Mjolnir. But he pins Thor down and then uh, gets his Stormbreaker out of his hands. So Thor's trying to get uh, Mjolnir back and then it lifts up and you just kind of see it lifting up and like Thor and Thanos in the background. But then all of a sudden it flies and then it just cuts to Captain America catching Mjolnir while holding his shield. And it was like, because you guys know on Age of Ultron, he like barely just lifted it. But apparently he should, I don't know if he was just had such adrenaline or something, but he just picks up Mjolnir and he's just ready to use that thing. So it just cuts to that and like and the theaters went crazy. Um, but yeah, so he starts swinging it like, uh, like Thor does. And he just like, it was an awesome fight. Uh, Captain America redeems himself in a 1v1 uh, battle against Thanos and it was just awesome like Captain America had Mjolnir in his shield and he was just he was just like just clapping Thanos um, but eventually Thanos like he takes um, he takes his blade actually slices it into Captain America's shield and then he just punches it a few times and yes breaks Captain America's shield it's like it, he doesn't like shatter it but the whole I mean it's pretty much half a shield at this point and the top half is just completely shattered um, so yeah, so it kind of looks derpy. He's just got like half a shield. Um, but yeah, so at this point, um, he put up a really good fight, but it's time for reinforcements. So then all of a sudden he's kind of just standing there. He like straps his shield tighter and he like just gets ready to go at it, um, finish off Thanos. But then all of a sudden the little Doctor Strange, uh, portal opens up and then like the theater started cheering again, um, as, um, as, uh, um, as uh, Black Panther and um, uh, like his um, uh, Black Panther and Shuri uh, walk back out back from being dusted and then also uh, um, Okoye who didn't get dusted but she just walks back out so um, they met back up um, but turns out um, uh, later on they say that Doctor Strange like he said like uh, once they all got back um, they're all back on the planets wherever they were when they got dusted um, and Doctor Strange just says like, okay, they're they're finishing this. We need to get to them. And he basically just teleported everyone to, right to them. Uh, so yeah, so they just open up portals. I don't know what my lights are doing. They're like going out or something. They keep on flashing. Um, but uh, yeah, so they come out and then it's just like little groups. And then um, it was just really awesome because um, you guys know on Captain America Winter Soldier, like the introduction scene uh, to... Um, uh, uh, Falcon was he kept on um, or uh, Captain America kept on running uh, around like just tons of laps and every time he passed Falcon he said on your left um, but all of a sudden you just hear on your left and Sam Wilson just comes flying out um, as Falcon so that was really awesome um, and then of course Bucky Barnes comes walking out and just everybody like everybody who got dusted everybody who is still alive but wants to join in on the battle they just all come out there's like Tons of portals that just open up. Um, one portal, the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy come back out. Um, Star-Lord comes flying out, ready to beat up Thanos for the rest of the way. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you got like the Black Panther people. Um, and then you got like uh, the rest of the Avengers. Um, and then uh, pretty, much, pretty much everybody, just everybody that you have seen in the MCU that didn't die or um that got dusted um and didn't die before then so uh quicksilver doesn't return um gamora it's i mean she's there but it's just past gamora so she's helping out the the good guys but she's past gamora so, so she doesn't recognize star lord and so yeah so she's not really part of the guardians of the galaxy she's just kind of there but she is helping them out um but yeah she's back um of course loki he doesn't come back neither does heimdall or any of them but uh yeah so valkyrie um, she comes back and she, it was really awesome because you guys know that awesome scene where she was just like going, uh, the Valkyries were going on, uh, Hela on their Pegasus or Pegasi or however you say multiple Pegasus. 
But yeah, so the whole final battle, Valkyrie is just flying around on her Pegasus, and it was just awesome. Um, and then um, I can't remember if I saw him, but I imagine Korg and Meek were even there helping him out. Um, I can't remember if I saw them or not. Um, but uh, yeah, so Drax hops out, he hops on Cole City, and he's doing his little dagger shank thing, just shanking him in the back. Um, but yeah, so at this time, um, they start spawning in while while Thanos' army starts coming in, and he Thanos not only does he have the Outriders back, but he brings back the Chitauri. He's got a big old army of Chitauri, and then the Outrider dropships come in. Outriders start coming out. Of course, there's a Black Order, um, and then he actually even has these new troops. They're like giant Outriders. There's they're like these giant mammoth Outriders, and they even had the um, they even had the uh, flying Chitauri motherships. Um, I don't know what they're called, the Waverns or the Dragonflies or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's basically just like a Ready Player One battle, just like a huge scale battle with every character you would ever want to see battling. Um, and then I like uh, you just see like it pans up, and then you just see like um, you, you just uh, you see um, uh, Black Panther is standing there, and then all the Wakandan troops are just behind him and everything. And then they basically just kind of line up like they did on the Wakanda battle, but with everyone this time um, on Infinity War. Um, but yeah, so he starts doing his, like, um, you know, Bombay <laughs> chant or whatever he says. Um, and then it kind of just pans around, just showing that, like, everybody's there. And, th and this is when I, like, um, also got chills, was um, all of a sudden Pepper Potts at, in the full rescue armor comes flying out and, um, and just lands, like, next to Tony. So yeah, so you just got... Iron Man, the new uh, Mark 85 armor, um, or whatever it was. Um, surprisingly, he his armor in Infinity War is Mark 50, and now it's like Mark 84 or 5 or whatever. So somehow he's made 35 suits in between Infinity War and Endgame when you stranded on a ship the whole time. Uh, but I guess he did have those five years. I don't know if he made identical suits, but he did make Rescue, so that was probably one of them. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, Rescue comes out. She's like a really cool blue suit. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of like the nanotech armor. It's basically just like a female version of, uh, Iron, uh, Tony's armor. But, uh, yeah, so th it just pans around, just shows everybody. Um, and then, uh, once Black Panther gets done with his chant, they just all go in right there. And it was, like, just the awesome, like, Avengers music and everything, and they're just all going in and battling. And, um... Yeah, and like all the flying characters are just flying around with Falcon and the Pegasus, um, like uh, Star Lord and uh, Wasp is back, of course. And you even, I mean, even like uh, Hank Pym and uh, Janet Van Dyne um, were uh, were like they weren't like at the battle. I don't think I didn't see them, but they do show up a lot later, of course. Um, but yeah, so everybody just goes battle. You see uh, Ant Man walking forward. He's uh, back into his giant man form. <laughs> So yeah, and then um, another thing that people clapped for, uh, clapped and cheered for is um, Spider-Man. I can't remember what he says, but he comes flying out in his Iron Spider suit again. And uh, yeah, so he's just ready to ready to go again. Um, so yeah, so they are just all battling, and it was just so epic. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, eventually like um, they pick up the hammers, and Thor uh, picks up Mjolnir, and Captain America picks up Stormbreaker. And um, he, and then Thor was just like, no, no, you get you get the small one, I get Stormbreaker. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Captain America uses his shield and Mjolnir during the battle. Um, but yeah, and then pretty much the whole time, Thor's just going full lightning, uh, full to his abilities that he can. Um, and yeah, so they're just they're just battling, and eventually, after I mean, this battle literally went on for like half an hour. They're playing hot potato with the Stark Tech Gauntlet. Um, so yeah, so Hawkeye, of course, is like still running with it um, once he gets it back. Uh, but then Spider-Man, um, uh, he like uh, they start like surrounding uh, Hawkeye. So Spider-Man um, says he'll take it, and he kind of uses his web to bring it up to him. So he's flying around with the uh, or swinging around with the Stark Tech Gauntlet. But eventually, they um, shoot his uh, one of the uh, guys shoots his web, um, and he falls down and starts getting attacked. Um, so it was kind of cool because you actually get to see his insta kill mode from um, uh, that was kind of teased on Spider-Man: Homecoming. Um, but yeah, so he his arms come out, pop out, and he just starts killing Outriders left and right. Um, but eventually they kind of override him 
or over uh, run him and so someone else has to take the gauntlet um, so uh, at that point Black Panther took it and he just starts like running and using in light it was really awesome because he was just like running through uh, and of course he wasn't really like hitting anybody um, but they're just charging up his armor so then every once in a while he would just like blast and kill tons of Outriders and Chitauri um, but yeah, so they get the gauntlet, and then Scarlet Witch comes down an epic entrance and kind of just, uh, lifts back stuff and everything that she needs to, and, um, at the same time, they start blasting back so many, so much land that, like, the ocean or the river or whatever starts just pouring in, and there was, uh, a reference earlier on that they said it was, like, the quaking ocean or whatever, quaking seas, and then the ocean starts coming in, and it has, like, a weird thing, so at that point, I was just like, is Namor, the submariner, gonna just, like, pop in, like... Um, if you guys don't know him, he's like a, he was a big Marvel hero back in the very old comics, but, uh, he was one of the original Avengers, but, uh, I have heard that there's, I think they're planning to do something with him, um, I think he's gonna be a hero starting in, sometime in Phase 4, but he is definitely coming to MCU, I'd say. Um, but yeah, so you also see, uh, they, um, uh, War Machine, um, he hopped out of his suit, uh, when they're, like, buried, um, but then all of a sudden, like, during the battle, he, like, shows up in, like, this same suit, but it was, like, a lot more bulky, and, um, yeah, so it was, it was, like, very War Machine, um, because, of course, he had, like, all of his guns and stuff, but it was also, like, I mean, he was built like a tank, um, so, yeah, so I don't really know where that came from, um, because he kind of stepped out of his armor, I don't know if he just, like, picked it up on the way out or something, or what, but, um, yeah, so that, it was pretty cool, though, um, but, yeah, so, um, also, uh, um, so at this point, uh, Thanos is just kind of getting sick of it. He orders his ship to do, like, the heavy blast, and they start shooting down, like, these mortal, or mortar blasts, um, and they just start, like, pounding down on the heroes. Um, but then all of a sudden, like, the ship just, like, blow. you just see, like, this bright flash, and then the ship just, like, blows up, um, and then just, like, starts collapsing and everything, and Thanos, he was just, like like he he knew he was just like okay buddy um but yeah so then all of a sudden captain marvel comes flying down so she decided that uh that she might as well join in on this last battle here on earth um but yeah so uh she destroys the ship so now it's just up to thanos and his army um so yeah so she's on the ship or she's back here um and then of course there had to be some sort of scene with captain marvel versus thanos um because of course she saw that um uh, nick fury she's really close with uh, was dusted away. Of course, now he's back, but, uh, she wants her revenge on Thanos. So, uh, yeah, so she pretty, I mean, she, just like Captain America, she goes ham on him and just starts beating up Thanos, um, and weakens him, and, she, um, and at the same time, Scarlet Witch was kind of, like, using hit her powers, and she, they're, like, kind of stretching his armor, and it was, like, cracking his armor. So his armor's, like, all cracked, and he's getting a lot more weak, um, and most of the Black Order's dead again by this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, in like, all the Tatari ships are going down, so it's pretty much just the ground troops now. Um, but, yeah, so then, uh, all the other heroes are doing other stuff, and then, uh, Doctor Strange is still holding back, like, all the water and everything, um, uh, while using his portals to get everybody to where they need to go. Um, so then it's basically just back to, like, the main three, Captain, Captain America, um, Iron Man, and Thor. They're all fighting Thanos again, um, and Thanos, or er, Thor has, like, his big fight with him. He's using both, uh, Stormbreaker and Mjolnir at this point, and, like, his full lightning eyes and everything, but, yeah, he, he's fat until the end. He never, he never, like, he has, uh, from the time it says five years later to the end, uh, Thor is still, I mean, he looks like the big Lebowski. He's got his long hair and beard and... He's a pretty big chubster, um, but, uh, yeah, so, but he's still, he's still good. I imagine by the next time we see him, he'll be, he'll be back to being super swole and regular Thor again, um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so they basically just fight, and the gauntlet ends up, uh, back, um, to them, and Thanos gets it, and he puts it on, and I heard a lot of people in my theater, and they're just like, no, but yeah, so he gets the gauntlet, and it just kind of, like, shows him, um, and he's just kind of, like, holding it like that, and he's, and, um, it's just, like, that side, um, and at this point, like, Iron Man has another kind of one-on-one -on -one battle with Thanos, um, but it was pretty darn slow, and he's kind of just holding Iron Man, but he's, Iron Man's obviously, like, tussling with the gauntlet, um, so yeah, so Thanos says, like, I am inevitable, I am inevitable, 
or I am inevitable, inevitable. Um, and then he snaps his fingers, um, but then all of a sudden nothing happens, and then he turns the gauntlet, and there's none of the stones, and then all of a sudden it just pans, and like at this point, like him holding Iron Man like that, and then once he said that, like I kind of just knew what was gonna happen next, and like I just started like tearing up, and I it was like just insane. So then it turns to Iron Man, and he's holding the Stark Gauntlet with all six stones. It's like already starting to shock him and stuff, and then he has his mask off, and he says like I am, and then it just waits a couple seconds, and then he he says Iron Man, so it's a little catchphrase, and then he snaps the fingers, and then Thanos just gets that look of disappointment, and it just like flashes away. Um, so yeah, so that scene was like, that was probably the single best scene in the MCU to this date, um, or to this day, um, but yeah, so after that, um, uh, so, or before that I, I will mention, um, so during the battle you do get this little, there's this little scene where Iron Man and, uh, Pepper in her rescue suit, it's really cool, they, like, they had their, like, back repulsor, like, things, um, in a really cool move that they did is Thor actually threw, like, he kind of, like, threw, uh, lightning out of his Stormbreaker into Iron Man's back, and then he, like, popped out these things and used, like, all of his repulsors, like, I mean, he used his, his, uh, arc reactor, uh, chest repulsor, both of his hand repulsors, um, and then he had, like, six on his back, um, he just, like, used the power of, like, the sun on Thanos, um, but yeah, and then also you get to see, um, of course, Iron Man in uh, the rescue armor back-to-back. Uh, -back. And it was really cool, like, finally seeing Pepper and Iron Man just back-to-back -back fighting. Uh, so yeah, so... But then after that, you see all of the Chitarian Outriders. They're all dusting away, just like Thanos did. Uh, but this time, it's Thanos' turn. Um, but yeah, everything just falls and fades away. Um, everything that had anything to do with Thanos and his army... Um, and, uh, um, and then Tony's there, he is, like, I mean, it is, like, burnt to unrecognition on the side of his face, and it is just, like, completely burnt on this side, and he's, like, he's very, very, very weak, and, um, and so Pepper comes over and take, her mask comes off, and, uh, Spider-Man swings over, and that was, like, I, like, started, like, really kind of crying there. Um, but yeah, so, cause Peter comes over and takes off his mask, and he's like, um, it was kind of like the Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good part, but this time, like, Peter, he was full on crying, and he was, like, coming over, and he was, like, crying and saying, Mr. Stark, don't go, and everything. Um, but yeah, so, basically, like, his closest people that were there, um, so, like, uh, uh, Rhodey comes over, of course, War Machine, and Pepper, and Spider-Man, um, of course, Captain America and Thor were also there. But he was kind of just leaning up, and he was, uh, Pepper put her hand on his arc reactor as it was kind of, like, flickering. Um, and she said, like, uh, Friday, uh, or she said, like, Friday, and then she said, um, uh, she said, like, vitals critical or something like that. Um, and then, so basically she just kind of smiles, and she said, like, it'll, it'll all be okay, and, uh, you saved everyone, and, um, it's, you can rest now. And then, um, everybody's kind of crying, and, uh, Thor and Captain America even, like, breaking down quite a bit, and then his, uh, repulsor just kind of goes, like, <laughs> and sh shuts off, and he passes, so yeah, so that scene right there, I was like, whew, <laughs> um, but, uh, so yeah, so the one, I was kind of s expecting that, but at the same time, I was just like, once it, even once it came, like, no matter how much you expect that, like, I don't know, like, um, because on Infinity War, there's still many scenes where I, like, I watched it a couple nights ago, um, I watched it twice since I got it on physical media, and I watched it a couple nights ago just to watch it again before I went and saw Endgame, and I still get chills on some of the scenes in there, and still almost tear up at the, like, the, uh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good scene, so this one, like, there, I don't even know how I'm gonna, like, it's gonna be quite a few watches before I don't, like, feel much, um, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, so, and it basically ends there. I don't really know where the rest of the heroes were. It was kind of just quiet, like, except for everybody that was right there. I don't, it just seemed like all the other heroes were gone. Um, but yeah, so then it just, like, hands over to Thanos, and he's just kind of sitting there, and he's just like, and I thought he was going to, like, have a final word, but no, he just kind of, like, just sits there, and then he just, like, slowly, uh, turns to dust, and Thanos is defeated. Uh, so yeah, so not only was it sad, because, I mean, of course, it's been most of my, it's been a long part of my life, I remember my grandpa from California, uh, was over, and we saw the first Iron Man in theaters, uh, me, my dad, my big brother, and my grandpa, 
we all saw the first Iron Man in theaters, and like, um, of course, he's my second favorite superhero um, of all time. And uh, yeah, Iron Man has, I mean, as far as the MCU goes, he has like been my vein of the MCU, like my favorite superhero in the MCU, and just like I have just loved everything with Robert Downey Jr. Like he's made to be Iron Man. Um, so yeah, so not only seeing him go, but also Thanos, like Josh Brolin, without a doubt, was the best villain of the MCU today, um, to date. Um, and seeing him go, of course, he's also my favorite comic book villain. And the Infinity Gauntlet and the Stones are my favorite, like, uh, inf uh, comic book item. So just seeing, like, the whole just saga of Iron Man, Thanos, and the Infinity Gauntlet come to an end was, like, just the... It was, like, the happiest yet saddest thing. Um, but yeah, so... But it was kind of Iron Man's arc. Um, it, I mean, he started it all. He, I mean, he was the first movie part of the MCU. Um, so he started the MCU and he ended... Of course, the MCU isn't over, but he ended what what it's so far the what they call the infinity saga um so i don't know why but this isn't the last movie of phase three the last movie of phase three of spider-man far from home um which is very weird um i i think endgame is a perfect ending for a phase of the mcu and then whatever's next can just be like all right here we go on a new chapter but yeah i don't know why they're doing that um but uh so yeah so that was that so after that it kind of just cuts back to their little cabin and um and uh yeah so uh and then basically happy hogan is back um in their living room w along with like pepper Potts and their daughter um and they're basically watching like this hologram thing that tony made if they made it and he was basically saying like it's all right and if you're watching this hopefully it's in celebration um and he basically like uh is, goes up to um, uh, Morgan Stark, and throughout the movie, like, before she went to bed, she would say, like, I love you 3,000 and everything, and then he kind of went over to her and said, I love you 3,000, and then the thing shut off, um, so yeah, so after that, they all go outside and, like, pretty much just, I mean, everybody that was just in this battle before, um, is there, but this time, like, they literally even, like, if you remember the kid from Iron Man 3, he was literally even at the funeral, like, he was standing there alone, everybody else was kind of like standing with some people but yeah he was alone at first i didn't recognize him but i was just like oh but yeah he's grown up looks a lot different um but yeah he's at the um funeral and then of course this is where hank pym and janet van dyne are there as well um and yeah just everyone's there um hulk he's kind of like in a, a splint um or whatever they're called um and he's kind of just arms healing um <laughs> but uh yeah so then they just kind of like have this little like floating thing on the uh, like river lake outside their house and it's just like this little flower kind of bed thing and uh, it just has the little uh, like what I made right there, the little uh, um, trophy type thing I guess from the first Iron Man that it says like proof that Tony Stark has a heart um, just on there. Um, and uh yeah they kind of just look there and uh, they have like a little voiceover of Robert Downey Jr. in the background saying like um uh, like his little quote thing, like part of the journey is the end and everything. And uh, yeah, just pretty hard to watch, but uh, pretty darn uh, very good. Um, and then it ends with uh, uh, Hulk and um, Bucky and um, uh, Captain America and uh, Falcon all outside. Um, and they're, uh, they're saying, of course, they have to bring the stones back to where they need to go. So they're just sending Captain America back. And um, they're saying, like, for him, however long he needs, but for us, five seconds. So they teleport him back, or they trans, uh, they time travel him back, and they uh, he counts, and you just like, okay, three, two, one, and then they teleport him back, but nothing comes back except, um, uh, and he also takes Mjolnir with him because, sadly, uh, Thor did have to return Mjolnir because that would be kind of like not returning the Infinity Stone, so he just is back to just Stormbreaker. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, but they don't come back, and then all of a sudden, uh, they, they start getting mad at each other, and they're just like, bring him back, um, but then they turn around, um, and Falcon's just like, Buck, um, and they look over, and there's just a old man sitting on the bench, and it is, they go over there, and it's Captain America, uh, so yeah, so Bucky just tells Falcon to go up to him, and he has, like, his little shield in the case, um, and he starts talking to him, and he says, like, I thought I would um, I thought I would look into 
uh, getting one of those life things that uh, um, Tony was always talking to me about. So yeah, so basically, not only did he go back and return all the stones, but he just went back, met back up with Peggy Carter, and that, like, all he's wanted to do all this time was just, like, go back to where he went um, before he crashed into the ice um, on the, um, the first Captain America um, and have that uh, dance in their house with Peggy. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, he comes back, and as you guys know in the comics, um, both Bucky and Falcon had their times as Captain America, um, but he he tells uh, he gives the shield to Falcon, and he does, and he says like try it on, and he says uh, they just want it, but Bucky just nods at him, and so, yeah. So um, in the future we will be seeing Falcon as Captain America, which is really awesome. Um, can't wait to see how they interpret um, the the uh, like red, white, and blue Captain America Falcon suit um, and Falcon with the shield and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Um, and he basically said, uh, Fal uh, Falcon says that he's, uh, really happy for him, he really is. Um, and then it, uh, so that's basically it for that, and then it just cuts back to Peggy, and, um, it cuts back, and there's, like, old cars and stuff, it's, like, during the 40s or 50s, um, and it just cuts back to, um, like, a house in the suburbs, and, um, and, uh, 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 Captain America, like, just, like, in his, um, like, how he was, during the rest of the movies, um, with his blonde hair and everything, he was just in, um, him and Peggy are in their house dancing to their song, finally having that dance, um, so yeah, so he basically just went in time and lived out his life how he was supposed to, um, so yeah, so, um, honestly, that is pretty much it, I pretty much just summarized the whole three hour and one minute long movie, just like I did Infinity War, but now on to my actual like review part. Um, so yeah, so that was the summary. So overall, um, the first part is really, really cool, really nicely paced, I think. Um, once they kill Thanos and it says like the five years later, it does slow down. So for like that 45 minutes to an hour or so, it did get kind of slow and that part's kind of boring, but um, uh, yeah, there was humor sprinkled throughout. Of course, there's a lot of funny parts. Um, of course, I love Korg and um, Thor, and pretty much everybody had some sort of comedic part at some point. Um, but yeah, and overall, of course, Anthony and uh, Joel Russo um, directed it amazingly. I, I Pretty much all the MCU movies by them are my favorite ones, like Captain America Civil War, uh, Avengers Infinity War, and uh, Endgame, um, and like all those ones. Um, uh, so yeah, so, um, and pretty much, I mean, the pacing was good, um, except for, like, that hour, like, I think it was kind of slow, but at the same time, I felt like it needed it, so, like, at this, it, like, overall, I just feel like the pacing was pretty much good, um, I think there was some stuff that could have been cut out of there, uh, but overall, um, it was really good, I think overall, like, if you're just watching a movie for pure entertainment, um, they're saying, like, the, the brains of the two movies, the brains and the like feelings of the two movies is Endgame, but the bronze and the action and everything is uh, Infinity War, so that will be like more entertaining, but that last hour, I think just trumps anything in the MCU, like I would, I probably, that last hour I can, I will be able to watch more than anything I've ever seen in the MCU and probably ever will, um, until whatever in the next decade, whatever the next Endgame type movie is, um, but, uh, I just don't think it will be as big still, though, because, like, these are, like, the most iconic characters, um, entering, and, like, I mean, it's so, like, especially for me, like, I just, uh, like, I just think it's, like, a lot more for, um, like, connecting if you like those things a lot more, because, like, of course, I love the whole, like, Infinity Gauntlet and Thanos and, Iron Man and stuff, and we won't have that going forward, so that's, like, the end of it for here, um, so, yeah, so, I don't think anything will ever beat this, um, maybe not even in cinematic history, like, that last hour was just astonishing, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, as always, pretty much all the acting, I didn't really notice any bad acting at any point, like, the, all the acting was amazing, costume design, again, was really great, really loved, uh, uh, Captain America's new, like, scale, costume, kind of like True to the Comics was really cool, um, Ronin's costume was cool, uh, 
Black Widow's new costume was pretty nice. And um, just all of them, I really loved how they like made whole new suits, uh, the Quantum Realm suits, and like how Iron Man and War Machine just kind of like uh, made into their Iron Man suits and stuff. Um, but everybody else is like, they kind of had like Ant-Man looking helmets. Um, and the first time when they were testing it out, Ant-Man was actually wearing like Hank Pym's time travel Quantum Realm suit, which is kind of cool. I was wondering why it was so baggy at first. Um, but uh, yeah, so also the set design, whether it was CGI or legit, was pretty darn amazing. The emotional and all that stuff was, of course, amazing. Um, and of course, uh, just the lighting and directing of photography and all that was like there. I almost have no complaints. I rated, um, uh, I rated Infinity War and Endgame both a ten out of ten on IMDb. Um, I just, I just think that like out of the MCU, like those two movies are just something very special. And like, I just think the MCU up until now, some people are saying it's like like what it's been able to accomplish and manage to do is better and bigger than what Star Wars managed to do and um and it, it's it's like almost true because like I mean now the the MCU is bigger than Star Wars I would say like I mean yeah in movies but like like the movies like like Star Wars The Force Awakens was huge but like The Last Jedi and everything since then is like like would you rat like just the MCU has kind of been a lot bigger um than Star Wars ever since like Rogue One and all those movies um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, but, yeah, so, we have one more movie this year, um, Spider-Man Far From Home, um, pretty excited for that, um, of course, Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, and uh, I believe they're introducing the Elementals, um, so, um, like Hydra Man and, uh, Molten Man and all that, um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, overall, I absolutely loved Endgame. Definitely make sure to go see it um, in theaters and get it on physical media. I cannot wait to watch it again. Um, it's three hours. doesn't really seem like three hours, honestly. Um, but, uh, yeah, just definitely make sure to go and watch it. It was absolutely amazing. I don't really know what else I can say, really. Um, but, yeah, it's just the past 11 years has all been leading up to Infinity War and Endgame. And yeah, this is it. So now it's just like a new beginning with like the new heroes that they've been introducing. Um, so yeah, so I imagine Thor, he's probably, um, of course, uh, so they have to get kind of Star-Lord. He was looking at a screen um, in the third ship and at Gamora and everything. And he's, uh, I, so I think the plot for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is them actually trying to find Gamora and get him back to, get her like back on the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, um, yeah, they're gonna like take past Gamora and try getting her back to normal and stuff. Um, but also, uh, Thor is actually at the end. He actually goes onto the ship and says like, "We're the Asgardians of the galaxy." And of course, him and Peter start uh, kind of bickering over who's the leader of the Asgardians of the galaxy. So I don't know if it's gonna be called Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three or the Asgardians or Asgardians of the Galaxy Volume Three or whatever. Um, but yeah, so Thor is now, um, he actually goes to New Asgard with Valkyrie, um, says that, uh, he says, um, he says, like, um, it's time for me to be what I want to be, not for what I was meant to be or whatever, um, and he says that Valkyrie is now the queen of Asgard, so yeah, so Valkyrie now has a pretty big role, she's actually the queen of New Asgard, and, um, he is actually part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, so, um, I thought, like, most of the contracts was over, but I don't, I don't know, I think, I think he's just, um, I don't know if he's gonna get killed off or what in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, or if he's just in it for more movies or what, um, but yeah, so I, he definitely will be in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, um, but they're also, a big plot line of that movie is also gonna be Adam Warlock, which, um, be a lot more fair fight, um, against Adam Warlock if they had, uh, Thor with them, um, but uh, yeah, and by that time, like I was saying, I think he'll probably be all muscly and stuff again, regular Thor. Hopefully short hair again. I, I just, I like Thor so much better when he has the short hair, honestly. Um, but uh, yeah, and then it also ends with Peter. Um, they said Spider-Man Far From Home actually starts minutes after Endgame ends. Um, and basically it ends with Peter walking back into Midtown High or whatever it's called, I believe it's that. Um, he walks back into high school, um, and meets Ned, and, like, Ned's even crying, and he's just, like, meets back up with Peter. 
Uh, so yeah, so I think it, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home will start off like right there, pretty much for him. Um, but yeah, and then uh, Hawkeye goes back to his family. He pretty much retires, so I don't think we'll be really seeing any more Hawkeye either, because uh, he pretty much retires uh, officially this time and goes back. Um, but yeah, so other than like uh, characters not returning, um, or at least like big heroes not returning, uh, like Hawkeye, um, uh, yeah, like Hawkeye, and then like the characters that died and stuff. I think we will see them. I don't know if we're gonna see any more Pepper as the the new Iron Man. People are saying like uh, we're gonna see like future things of uh, Jordan or um, uh, Morgan uh, Stark as Iron Man because she does uh, become like an Iron Woman or whatever in the comics. Um, but I do not really know. All right, guys. So I'm done filming the review for me. But um, some things I forgot to mention was also on the uh, scene where um, it shows like his uh, Hank Pym's ant farms and stuff. It actually pans by um, a helmet. It's like a rough looking helmet, but it's actually like um, the uh, like original Ant-Man helmet from the comics, like with the open mouth and the little antenna and stuff. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was a cool thing, but also I don't know if they CGI'd him or if they actually did manage to get uh, one last cameo before he passed away. Um, but yeah, there was a Stanley cameo. He was actually like, he drove by in a Van, he was like, um, he was actually like, he, he looked exactly like, uh, the, like the, uh, Stanley from like the 60s or whatever, um, like he was in the pictures, uh, <laughs> writing comics and stuff, uh, but yeah, he just drives by in a car and he's like a hippie kind of Stanley looking guy, uh, but yeah, so, uh, that will probably be the last Stanley cameo, um, I don't know if they're gonna do like, uh, old man Steve Roger cameos now, or if they're gonna do anything like that anymore, but, uh, yeah, so that was cool to see uh, one last time. So I think now that's it. Um, so yeah, so now on with the rest of the review. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, of course, uh, Captain Marvel is probably going to be like the new big character like Iron Man was, uh, who was like in the most movies, like cameoed in the most movies, or was just in the most movies. Um, so yeah, so she's probably going to take up like the new mantle of like the main um, hero in the MCU. Um, Along with, of course, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, um, and then, of course, um, War Machine, I think I could see returning. He's probably going to be, like, the new main Iron Man, of course, I think. Because, um, of course, we have Rescue and then Morgan once she grows up more. Um, but then War Machine, um, I think he'll still be coming back for a little bit. Um, and then, um, of course, like, Scarlet Witch and Bucky and uh, the new Falcon, Captain America. Um, and on and on. But, uh, yeah, so that is finally pretty much it i think i've said everything that i wanted to say on it um but uh yeah so absolutely amazing movies happy so happy i finally got to get both of these review summary and reviews out i know this was super long um longer than the infinity war one but it kind of had to be i mean if you think about it this is like a summary of the past 11 years um but uh yeah so um if you're a complete fanboy know it all about Marvel and stuff like I am um and have seen like every MCU thing and like know tons of stuff about the comics um then you'll probably like feel the same way I did about this movie and everything too um but yeah so that's pretty much it for my review again if you haven't seen my Infinity War summary interview link is down in the description of this video and the past video and um yeah I'll see you all later so make sure to like subscribe I'll see y'all later bye